Hello everyone, this is Kuroda coming at you, giving you game one in a series between Fly and a two JQY. I'm not quite sure how you would actually pronounce that, so I'm not going to even bother to try. As we see, um, well, let's go ahead and take a look at the colors. The teal undead player is spawning on the top left hand side of the map. Meanwhile, Fly spawning on the bottom right hand side of the map as the purple orc. This is game one in the series, as I mentioned, on Ancient Isle. And hold on, one more lag. Okay, there you go. All the lag should be done for now as we are getting things set up and getting things underway. Undead versus orc. And yes, it does feel like Undead, Orc, and Night Elf has, have really been um, moved to the upper echelons of Warcraft 3 race dominance. Perhaps we're just waiting to see if there's going to be any more human strategies that are developed later. But as of right now, not that many human games, just Orc, Undead, and Night Elf almost going back down to the standard three races as in StarCraft 2. Now, as things get underway, I'm going to go ahead and slow things down already at the 2 minute 30 second mark. Blade Master going to go ahead and clear out that one Ogre Magi, picking up a Ring of Protection plus 2. Not necessarily the best item for him. He'll sell the Scroll of Town Portal, pick up a Healing Salve, and start to heal himself as soon as he realizes that he is out of range of that Troll Axe Thrower. Meanwhile, back over here, the Crypt Fiend doing a good job aggroing those units, but he really wants to stay on Blight if possible. That's really what he's looking to do there. You can see Skeletal Minions now being brought over. Death Knight now taking a little bit of damage. There's a Death Coil onto that Crypt Fiend. And that Crypt Fiend absorbed far too much damage. And now the Undead is actually very, very far behind in the experience race. You can see that the Blade Master going to go straight for that Crypt Fiend there. Death Knight will be forced to use another Death Coil to try and save that. As you can see, the Death Knight does have a little bit, or he should have really done that much, much earlier. The Blade Master may be able to finish off that Crypt Fiend now. Crypt Fiend now down to 35. Oh, ends up getting taken down by the Creeps. No real harm or foul there. As it doesn't give experience to that Blade Master. That Crypt Fiend was good as gone, anyways, as that Blade Master now chases that Death Knight back onto Blight. Now, that Death Knight, while on Blight, even without Unholy Aura, is a very, very fo um, fearsome foe to deal with. You can see that the Blade Master. Oh, there's the Dust of Appearance. Let's see, are we going to get any more damage to come through? Death Knight still wandering around in circles. There's the Speed Scroll now being used, trying to capture away. There is a Death Coil Scroll of Town Portal, and oh, the Bl Blade Master may end up falling. Yes, it does. But I'm not quite sure who really comes out with the victory there. The Death Knight burns through a Scroll of Town Portal, kills the Blade Master, doesn't get experience though. So if you are looking purely at hit points lost, that Death Knight is now sub 150 hit points. Has to be careful of a grunt still as the Death Knight uh, doing a little bit of a dance there. Yeah, he's going to uh, play a little bit of a dangerous game. Meanwhile, that Blade Master will be out in just a moment. So... Yes, he did end up saving that um, that Death Knight, preventing the experience gain. But at the same time, he didn't really gain much out of it. And he's actually, I think, behind in terms of the experience. If he does end up buying a new scroll of Town Portal, he'll have spent about 170 gold more than his opponent. Now that Death Knight um, should really be waiting on Blight infinite experience range while you only have one hero so that death knight could have been sitting on blight he would have been protected from the blade master who is already back up if that blade master had just wind walked over that would have been a serious problem if he hid under the nerubian tower and was on the blight he would probably have upwards of 250 hit points right now as opposed to the 70 hit points he has all right, let's continue to um, move on our merry way. Death Knight needs to finish off this Forest Troll Trapper and this Ogre Magi. And I believe this Death Knight is going to end up falling within the next um, five minutes or so, or three minutes or so, if the Blade Master makes his way over to try and put a little bit of pressure. Grunt does show up. However, his healing is cut short due to the... Well, whatever those little ball thingies are coming off of those Crypt Fiends, as the Death Knight now finally has Unholy Aura and the means to regenerate hit points passively on all of his undead units. Let's take a look at the Blade Master. Blade Master has a Mana Stone there, picking off the high level item um, from the high level item from that creep there. He was looking most likely for a potion of greater, um, looking perhaps a, for a Health Stone. Um, health stone, mana stone, or maybe uh, well, you, you, a potion of greater healing. I don't think actually drops in the same tier as a mana stone. I think the mana stone is actually one tier higher. A potion of greater healing, potion of invulnerability. 
and uh, greater mana potion are all at the same tier so yeah. mana stones are should be one level higher and would not have been dropped there Torin chieftain now making its way over and this is somehow entertaining to see that the Torin chieftain is somehow um, forcing this death knight to try and do a little bit of retreating seal domains are now making their way through you can see no stomp or endurance or it has been picked up on that Torin chieftain as of yet and i am surprised that it is a Torin chieftain over a shadow hunter coming in from fly but perhaps a stomp or shockwave will stop some of these crypt fiends in their tracks meanwhile back over here a torrent chieftain finally gets endurance aura the movement now significantly faster on that torrent chieftain as the remaining units are now just doing a little bit of chasing and now wandering out blade master hoping to get some easy damage onto the death knight death knight now down to about 270 hit points still gonna be able to regen a little bit more with that unholy aura as the units are now backing off back over here let's take a look Torin chieftain looking to clear out the goblin merchant shop Noel overseer going to drop here and i i believe it's going to be a rather useful item oh tomo of a strength plus two for some reason 50 hit points and plus two damage on a Torin chieftain not worth reading who doesn't enjoy a good book come on all even athletes like the Torin chieftain like a good book from time to time blade master now waiting line and wake to take down the null overseer the blade master is right there a little bit of damage there and you can see that the blade master is not gonna steal the experience but gets the item claws of attack plus six a huge item there and the undead has just got to be kicking himself he knows that he is just losing a lot of ground level two death knight level one lich against a level two blade master and a level two torrent chieftain all right what's going to be happening there the blade master now trying to get some damage off maybe able to get that skeletal minion blade master is still sitting uncomfortably at level two really wishes that it was higher level already torrent chieftain now makes its way off to the north this map does have a fair number of creep camps and you can see that fly um does end up going for tier three and fortress so what are we looking at here it is not un unheard of to go for fortress i believe fortified armor on your orc burrows is a fortress upgrade and very necessary if your opponent goes destroyers undead players being undead players often go for destroyers so that is perhaps one of the reasons why we are only looking at one bestiary though so fly really not heavy in the production of units so far with only some only one raider out on the field and i am curious as to what his follow-up plan will truly be lich death knight now out on the field orbo corruption passed off to the lich lich now adding in a negative five armor debuff per attack as the death knight trying to get to level oh takes up the tome and gets the oh, does not get the experience the death knight gets the experience right there but just a little bit late um and we're looking at the lich sitting at level one and the death knight sitting at level two just a little bit more experience is needed dust of appearance may be used meanwhile the blade master is going to be making its way over there's the blade master it is revealed and no frost nova going in all right noel overseer taking a little bit of damage it will get taken down there's that double level that we were looking at from the undead and surprisingly oh wow beautiful beautiful kill on the blade master picking up the dark ranger to silence after the frost nova not capable of the wind walk and the blade master falls at level two with a sudden frost nova level two death coil that really came out of nowhere and it is going to be tri hero versus tri hero on both sides the torrent chieftain may now have to be the hero of choice for fly if he wants to get back into this book of the dead also known as, as book of win but that is only only possible if your opponent does not have destroyers obsidian statues currently being trained up i do not know if destroyer research has been completed i would assume not but we have we do know that the death knight has had that orb of corruption since much earlier so there could be uh destroyer upgrades already all right if there's a destroyer upgrade that obsidian statue should be shaking right now as it tries to upgrade nope nothing there we are going to be taking down that voodoo lounge scene at 54 over 60 supply compared to 47 over 50 but you got to remember the blade master currently um getting resurrected and all he is really doing is stealing a little bit of gold right now by adding to the food count by but also not doing all that much all right death knight does have a scroll of town portal blade master now currently out on the field dust of appearance they used as you can see the dark ranger getting in a death coil right there gloves of haste now being transferred to the blade master 
uh, Blade Master. Oh, there is a Crypt Fiend Illusion quickly taken down. As you can see, another Ensnare now going in on another unit there. All right. Obsidian statues do not, or I like, no, there is one destroyer out on the field. Death Knight is nearby. And one of the reasons why Unholy Aura is actually a very, very useful item is it gives, um, it gives a baseline regeneration to all units, including mechanical units. So when I say 50% increased regeneration, it's 50% in on, uh, compared to the normal base. Normally, Crypt Fiends do not have regeneration unless they are on Blight, then they have 200% regeneration. What that flat number is, I'm not 100% sure. As a Kodo Beast plays Hungry Hungry Kodo and is now slowly digesting two separate Crypt Fiends. Two Hungry Kodos, two Chomping Crypt Fiends, as the Torrent Chieftain walks right up, puts his foot down, just so that the Kodos could get a meal as those Crypt Fiends were stunned. All right, Blade Master, there is another Death Coil there to save a unit and snare now on the Crypt Fiend. This could be very bad news, as it looks like the Undead now in a desperate retreat. That Death Coil was a day late, as or in a dollar short, or not a day late, but you know what I mean. Death Knight now running all the way back here as Fly doing a great job pushing with, well, at least half of his army. The Kodo Beast in the backfield not really doing that much chasing as we are now looking at the Death Knight. Dark Ranger sitting inside the base hoping to make some sort of play. All right. Did, did we see the Lich? Yeah, I, saw, I thought I saw the Lich here a moment ago, but it was taken out. Kodo Beast now still digesting those Crypt Fiends very, very comfortably as I believe the Torrent Chieftain and that Torrent Chieftain Shadow Hunter Blade Master Trio is going to do more than enough damage to really shut down the undead play. All right, undead slowly licking his wounds, rebuilding his army. He just chose a very, very poor position to try and engage. Blade Master now thinking to himself, you know what, it would be nice to have a backup plan here and in getting an economic advantage just in case just in case things go south. All right, let's take a look over here. Torrent Chieftain now engaging. We may see an ensnare come in. The Kodo Beast importantly not digesting any units. And that is important cuz even though um, even though the Kodo uh, the Kodo Beast could just digest those units, those Crypt Fiends, they also give a sight so the Crypt Fiends are somehow able to see out of those Kodos. And go, you know what? I'm over here in the bottom left-hand side of the corner. They ha still have some communication possibilities to go back to the rest of that undead army. Don't ask me how in the Warcraft 3 realm they all have shared vision. No satellite technology, but still more than enough to keep everything alive and well. All right. Shadow Hunter currently sitting level 3. Torrent Chieftain gets the four. Blade Master still sitting at two, but he does have a very comfortable plus 16 attack. Meanwhile, Fly is going to try and build this Orc Burrow up in time. I don't, well, it should be able to actually get up in time. No, the Ski Skeletal Minions. I thought perhaps Crypt Fiends were up in the front line. No, it's not going to be able to do that. As you can see, the Crypt Fiends are now, the Skeletal Minions are now just going to go ahead and try and stop these peons from doing any serious mining whatsoever. Orc Burrow could end up getting taken down. But the, um, what, wait, Squirrel Town Portal now coming through. And are they going to land on any of those units? Oh, Squirrel Town Portal now landing back or going back the other way. There is the ensnare. There is the... Um, what silence and all the units now head back once more. Crypt Fiend still looking pretty comfortable. 49 over 60 compared to 61 over 80. 14 gold a second compared to 10. As we now have two gold mines for Fly. All right, two destroyers ready to go. One zero upgrades ready to go. Death Knight ready to go. But he has not been stepping up to the challenge by any means. And now that the Orc player has that expansion, it's going to be even harder for him to lose any real ground. The Fortress upgrade, a nice addition for the Orc army, makes a lot of sense. Shadow Hunter and the Torrent Chieftain, both very strong heroes, and both, I believe, actually higher level than, or um, higher experience than the primary hero. Yeah, the Shadow Hunter is almost level four. Meanwhile, the uh, Blade Master just got to three. All right, it looks like Fly is just taking his time now, hoping to wait it out. 
And I think if he just waits it out, he'll end up smelling like a smelling like a rose. He knows that he doesn't need to engage. He also knows that he's pretty pretty uh, uh, what just pretty pretty strong in the corner right here. Blade Master gonna go ahead and finish off a couple of those skeletal minions and also picking up an orb of lightning, enabling him enabling him to take down those destroyers and also purging them, thereby stunning them temporarily. All right, it looks like the destroyer is just now absorbed mana before the other one was trained. Units are now making their way over. Are they going to be able to, to do any sort of play here? Torrent Chieftain now ready to go. The Book of the Dead probably should just be sold back to the shop. Um, you don't want to give your opponent such easy access to so many summon units that would thereby end up giving the destroyers close to, I think, about 300 mana if they chomp on everything. Koto Beast now making their way over. Raiders are all in position. Wind Riders are ready to go. We are looking at Fly just testing the waters. Not yet quite ready to push out. He's at 76 over 80 supply, pretty or 77 over 80 supply, nearing um, nearing, nearing low upkeep or a serious, excuse me, high upkeep. And I cannot imagine Fly going into high upkeep at only 17 and minutes and 40 seconds into this match. Fly testing the waters outside here. There's that orb of lightning. There's that speed scroll. Extra damage plus 22 damage. And that doesn't even have the increased, what, attack speed? Uh, no, his attack speed is very fast because of the Gloves of Haste. Add in um, the Endurance Aura, and that is just going to be a very, very scary proposition as the Blade Master just holding off the undead army, keeping them at bay, keeping them inside their base. And now it looks like we're ready to go. Here we go. Blade Master using that Orb of Lightning pretty effectively. Now turning back around. You can see Kodo Beasts are here as well. They could start to um, digest some of those units. I do not see any Destroyers. As the Destroyers, even though they do deal magic damage, are rather weak to um, those Destroyers. Sorry, the Spirit Walkers. And those Spirit Walkers are worked, uh, weak to those Destroyers. Those Destroyers having that... And devour ability and also just being able to deal bonus damage to um, uh, surrounding units when they finally have mana. Blade Master looks ready and willing to go. He's going to try and keep tabs of this undead army. Undead army pretty much has nowhere to run right now. And they have really no options to go anywhere or do anything. The Destroyers hoping to catch up oh, this creep camp once on the top right hand side of the map. This is pretty much the last creep camp left. And if the Undead can capture this without getting Creepjack, they have a chance. But no, the Creepjack already coming in. There is one Obsidian statue quickly getting ensnared. Blade Master is right there. There is a potion of invulnerability keeping him alive. Shadow Hunter now backing off. No real way to heal the destroyer now. Um, destroyer is now trying to fight back here. There goes another destroyer. Dark Ranger hasn't really been able to do all that much. Perhaps if you had silenced the Blade Master and kept him silenced longer, that might have been better as the Blade Master now wind walks and is now getting away. Dark Ranger nearby. Is he going to perhaps try to go ahead and try and turn around? No, he is not. There is the GG. As Fly takes game one with a daunting score, scoring about 30 or 28,000 more than his opponent, the majority of that in heroes and unit scores. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Hope you guys enjoyed game one.